Welcome to this week's Waves of Information Galveston. I am standing here today with Kelly Deshawn. She is the Executive Director of the Park Board of Trustees. We are standing here on 14th Street in front of the largest beach renourishment project in the state of Texas. Kelly, tell me what's happening here today. So we've just begun a pipe and pump project. We're bringing approximately a million cubic yards uh, from an area called uh, Big Reef in the Ship Channel, which is over there by East Beach. They're dredging it up, suspending it in water, and then pumping it all the way down here to 12th and 14th Street, where they then discharge the material out. It dewaters, the water runs out, and then we're left with sand. Wow, that's incredible. That's a huge project. So this really is the largest one in Texas? So this singly, just to give you some perspective, when we laid down Babes Beach, which of course there wasn't a good substrate there to work on, we laid down 638,000 cubic yards of sand, and this is a million cubic yards of sand. So Babes had already been the largest project that we had done in Galveston to date and along the coast to date, but this outweighs that by almost a third. So we're super excited. Right now we're checking to see if it's not the largest beach nourishment project on the Gulf, because why just be tech? Texas. Why not be the Gulf? I love it. So tell me, where does the money for this come from? Because I know um, this is a this is a huge project. They can't be cheap to do this. Yeah, you know, there's been a couple of different models that we've used for the beach nourishment projects. Uh, just to backtrack for a minute, on Babes Beach, that was what they call beneficial dredge material. Every 18 months, the Corps needs to dredge the ship channel in order to maintain that uh, vital economic activity down there. Um, and they paid for the dredge, and we paid for the transport. And so that sand cost us about $9 a cubic yard which was a great buy. This project, however, we're paying for both the dredging and the transport, and so this sand is costing us uh, roughly $20 um, a cubic yard. That funding is a compilation of federal funding. This is partly a remnants from Hurricane Ike and funding that we still had left from FEMA. Uh, the, the state of Texas, through the office of the general land office, has uh, contributed significant resources as well. And then on a local level, really we've given very little for this type of project. Um, we're, our resources are being matched. For every dollar we're putting in, the state and the federal government is putting in $12. So this has been a great buy for us. The local resources are coming from a model that the city of Galveston was very innovative in establishing, which is a portion of a portion of the sales tax. And what I mean by that is several years ago, the citizens of Galveston um, voted to uh, apply a value-added tax to the sales tax, one-eighth of a penny. Out of that one-eighth of a penny, that's divided into four pieces, one-fourth of that goes to beach nourishment. It is restricted in its use. It can only be used for um, beach nourishment and generates about a million dollars um, a year. So while we as local residents have put into that, I would, I would challenge that the 6.5 million visitors we get a year and all of the economic activity they have on the island has to help to support that. Um, so it's a great project, $20 million uh, all told, of which uh, our contribution has been less than $2 million locally. That's incredible. What a great story we have to tell on the beach today. So how long do you think this is going to take to finish? There's the magic question, right? <laughs> so uh, we did start a little behind schedule. We had hoped that uh, they were uh, demobil they were mobilized and going before Christmas. Um, oddly enough, once they get going, it's only a 60-day project to go from 14th Street down to 61st Street. So uh, with the weather providing uh, uh, not a lot of uh, uh, strange weather in the Gulf, we should be done by mid-March. Uh, then they will have to demobilize, and by the time they pull all the equipment back up off the beach, uh, we're probably looking at the middle of um, April, May at the latest. But the heavy moving of sand and sediment should be done by middle of March if the weather provides. That's incredible. So by this summer, we will have our renourished beaches. Not only will we have our renourished beaches, as you know, Jury, we're going to have our plumbed potties up there. Thank you to I the city. And, and the showers. And the showers. And yep. I hear tell that we might hear trolley bells ringing down the seawall we as well. We may have rubber wheel trolley bells ringing. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for meeting us out here today, Kelly. We really appreciate this update. And thank you for bringing this project to the island. It's a pleasure. Love to do it, Jury, and we're having a great time. All right. Thanks. For more information on this beach renourishment project, you can visit our website, galvestontx.gov, and look under Community News, and you'll see the press release from the Galveston Island Convention and Visitors Bureau.
Next week on Thursday, we have our city council meeting. That's January 26th. The workshop will begin at 9 a.m. and the council meeting will begin at 1.15 p.m. To view what items are on the agenda for the meeting, you can go online to galvestontx.gov slash agendas and click on the latest workshop and agenda meeting packets. Last but not least, this weekend is the 8th annual Yaga's Chili Quest and Beer Fest. For residents, this means that 23rd from Harborside to Strand and Strand to Mechanic will be closed. There will be areas of no parking along Strand and an increase of runners along the sidewalk of the seawall on Saturday morning. Drivers will be able to use Strand throughout the entirety of the event. That's all we have for this week's Waves of Information. Bring your kids down and come watch the beach grow with us. Until next week, Galveston.